of the 2021 National Championship game. And you know, before every Stanford game, oh yeah, Fran Valibi rocking the rim, getting her teammates fired up. You are watching the Pac-12 on ESPN. As we welcome you courtside, hey everybody, Ryan Rucco alongside the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo, so happy to be with you tonight. Now, we're not only happy to be with you because we have a great game that's about to take place, but also at halftime, we're going to have the NCAA Top 16 reveal. So, a lot of reasons to be excited, including what we have seen from Stanford this season coming off a loss for Rebecca. They have one of the most potent inside-out combinations in the country. Two players who certainly complement one another in Haley Jones and Cameron Brink. Haley Jones, the 6'1 senior, had a monster game the last time Stanford played Arizona. 18 points, 16 boards, five assists. That tells you about her versatility. And then Cameron Brink, the 6'4 junior. She's strong inside, can step out to three and a defensive presence, second in the nation at just over three and a half blocks per game. Both players nearing double doubles in their averages, putting up serious production, both national champions as well. Meanwhile, for Arizona, hit a little bit of a run earlier in the season, but starting to find their stride, coming off a couple of wins that Adia Barnes found very gritty. Down double digits to both UCLA and USC, and able to win in overtime on the road in both of them. First time since the 06 07 season. They've won back to back overtime games. And I know you love Jade LaVille. Yeah, and Jade LaVille was instrumental in both of those wins. She's a big shot maker, including this one with under a minute to go in regulation. That helps send that game into overtime. She shoots 44% from three. The lefty is really good at creating her own shot, elevates, finishes. So important to Arizona on the offensive end of the floor. Jade LaVille, 17 points in that game and that big bucket to send it to OT as we send things over now through the fire to Holly Rowe. Well, you talk about the big game. Adia Barnes hopes that that USC double overtime win is a turning point for her team this season. And coming off that was one of the biggest performances of their year from Kate Reese with 33 points. Talking to Kate today, she said, my teammates found me early. I was rolling and they kept because they have bigs inside and shot blockers. She said, we want to keep that same aggressive mindset we had against the Trojans. Go inside, try to get them in foul trouble. She said, I'm really looking forward to picking up right where I left off, and this crowd of over 9,300 should help with the energy to do just that. You mentioned the crowd, Holly, and it is terrific. It has been terrific for a while under Adia Barnes. Eighth in Division One in attendance, and she really changed the trajectory of everything here. She's also wearing a terrific jacket. That is a swaggy outfit. Adia Barnes, seventh season as Arizona head coach, has done an absolutely fantastic job here, and has a really strong relationship with Tara Vanderveer, the head coach of Stanford, the winningest coach in Division One history, three times a national champion and has more wins than 344 Division I programs. Here was a nice warm moment between the coaches before the game. Comparing who had the nicer shoes and probably talking a little basketball? I think so. I remember talking with the DA even a couple years ago and her raving about the way Tara would reach out to her go through things in the Pac-12, lay of the land, checking in on her as a young coach. Really strong relationship between those two coaches. This game underway as Stanford wins the tip. LaPolo operating the point. An impressive freshman who Tara Vanderveer very happy with this season. Here he often gives it back to LaPolo. You see Arizona starting out in man-to-man -man defense. The first time these teams met, they had a hard time defending without fouling. Stanford was able to get to the line. And Brink misses her first attempt. She really struggled from the floor in the first meeting this season back on Jan 2nd. This is a matchup to keep your eye on. Haley Jones on Pellington up top. Rings out and Jones comes up with a rebound. 
Haley Jones, great size at 6'1", so it's going to be tough for Pellington when she has the basketball going against that size. Mentioned Brink struggles in that game. She was three for 15 from the floor on that Jan second contest. The Stanford win, 73-57 over Arizona. Shot clock fading again. Brink nearly got tied up. Can't flip it in. Erie Offen attacking the glass. Unable to finish. Offensive rebounds were a huge part of that win on Jan second for Stanford. They had 24 in that game. Here's Martinez. As Mary Martinez can't finish, loose ball, scooped up by Uriafin. Kiki Uriafin has not started the last few games for Stanford, but they need her rebounding presence in this one. Lapolo splashes in the jumper. Talana Lapolo, the freshman out of California, who Tara Vanderveer really emphasized to us what a fabulous freshman season she's had, the way she's defended, the way she's gotten them into their offense. Nice stop there from Haley Jones. Here comes the polo. Kicking out, jump, dumps it in. Brink had an angle initially, but a nice job to bounce back by Reese and then come up with a stop. A lot of contact there. They get away with it. Martinez short on a three, long rebound jump. Can I just say, I've never been in an arena where the, t the crowd stands until the opposing team scores. Oh, you're right, as Jones flips it in. Like, they usually stay standing until the home team scored. They sat as soon as Stanford scored. It's that, the oddest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, well, that, not ever, but <laughs> it's odd. Do you want to list the other odd things that top that in your <laughs> no, life that you see? You're right, though, Rebecca. I can't remember, I can't remember that either. LaVille, no. Reese trying to save it and could not. Well, what have we learned so far in these first three minutes is that the officials are going to let him play for the moment. Yeah, time. very physical. You know, there's been a few shots from Cameron Brink, that one from LaVille, probably just falling down. But there, it's been a physical game and no fouls yet. Arizona 0 for 5 from the floor. Stanford 2 for 6. Stanford has dominated this series all time as Jones can't finish it. Iriafin, no on the follow. And that time there is a whistle. And it's going to go against Kate Reese. So an early foul on Kate Reese, who has Holly detail for us, is essential to what Arizona does. Kate Reese got into foul trouble the last time these teams played as well. And you mentioned it. They need her on the floor. They need her rebounding. They need her boxing out. They don't have the size of Lauren Ware, the junior who underwent knee surgery in November. That was something that Adia Barnes talked with us about before the game as well, how much they miss Lauren's presence on the interior defensively, also her communication defensively. Second free throw, no good. Brink able to get to it. And Adia Barnes mentioned this morning, she said last time we played Stanford had five offensive rebounds off of free throws. That cannot happen. And already one there. Ah, oh, the deflection. Pueyo all the way in. Will pizza pie at home? That's what Arizona needs to do, Ryan. They need to get some offense off of defense. They need to get out in transition. Get some easy scores. And that is what they do. Now, Stanford, very good at protecting the basketball, but Arizona uh, among the nation's leaders in steals. Jones bounces. Here he often can't finish. Good look there. And here comes Pueyo. Pushing pace for Arizona. Into the corner, LaVille can't hit the three. Got a great look, and she is a 44% three-point shooter. LaPolo, good find in the corner. Jump rattles in a three. That's jump spot. She had a number of made threes again the first time these teams played, and almost all of them for, from the left corner. So quick getting her feet set and releasing the basketball. 42% from three this season, 42% from three in her career. The senior guard from San Jose. That dribble is lost by Fields. Brink bodies in, and that time able to finish. 
Cameron Brink with her first field goal after three straight misses. And absolutely don't let the frame fool you. Cameron Brink is not shying away from contact. One of her issues, of course, is getting into foul trouble, but offensively with the ball, she goes into the body to get to the hoop. Stanford coming off a surprising loss to Washington as, as Mary Martinez hits the three. Tara Vanderveer really challenged her team to bring it, to be more competitive. Thought they laid an egg in that game against Washington. Here's Reese off the miss. LaVille cross court. Cuello will fire. No. Elena Cuello, a 34% three-point shooter. And that's going the other way. An offensive foul is called against Kiki Iriafin. Hey, Saturday on ESPN, catch three matchups from the SEC and ACC. Kentucky, Georgia at noon. The number three Alabama and Auburn at two. Duke and number eight Virginia at four. College basketball Saturday at noon, two and four Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. 421 to go in this first quarter. Number six Stanford, a 10-5 lead on number 17 Arizona. Dominated the matchup all time. 74 and 14 in the first 88 matchups. They have won 38 of the last 40, including five straight, including the national championship back in 2021. That thrilling game after Arizona went on that magical ride to the championship game. What have you seen so far, Rebecca, in this first quarter? A little more than halfway through it. Well, number one, just like the first time these teams met, Stanford's getting all over the offensive class. They're getting those second opportunities. Coming down the other way, Arizona needs to continue to move the ball, try to get open looks because they can hit them when they get them. See if they get those opportunities. We welcome all of you on ESPN who have been watching the NHL at McHale Center in Tucson, Arizona. Ryan Rucco, the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo, and Holly Rowe with you. Pac-12 matchup and a really good one. Number six, Stanford out to an early 10-5 lead on Arizona. Rebecca, these teams met in the national championship game in 2021. Stanford coming off a tough loss. Arizona started to find themselves a little bit of late. Stanford, a team looked at as serious national championship contenders. And Arizona, they want to make some noise in March as well. Yeah, without question. Two teams that are still in the midst of finding themselves. And one of the things you know when you're talking about Stanford is that they are going to be led by this inside-out duo. Haley Jones, the senior, having another great year. Cameron Brink as well, the 6'4 junior. So these two players in a lot of ways and the fight and the grit that they show are going to help fuel how far Stanford can go. And for Arizona, they're coming off two really gritty wins that Adia Barnes hopes sort of serve as a turning point in their season. Yeah, she was really proud of her team. In both games, they were down double digits late. They were able to come back, force overtime, and then win in overtime. A lot of new pieces for this Arizona team still finding their way. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. Well, Kate Reese is coming off one of her best games in her career, a career high 33 points in that double overtime win against USC. And she said, I really have to credit my teammates. They could see that I was hot and they kept feeding me the ball. And just on cue, there she goes with her first basket of the game. She said, I want to pick up right where I left off against USC. And hey, I love it when she gets the cue from TV. Go for it, Kate. <laughs> That's right. People know to listen to Holly Rock. Now this way, Lauren Betts, yes, you have to give her the basketball. 6-7, she's got the advantage in there in terms of size. Here's Jones from 17. Rattles in a jump shot. Haley Jones, a first-team All-American a it, season ago. Did you see when Lauren Betts caught the basketball, surrounded by three, but she's a capable passer, able to find open teammates out of it. The freshman from Colorado. Here's Madison Connor. Back iron, no. Fran Bolivia into the game off the bench for Stanford as well. Bolivia had a huge game on January 2nd, first meeting between these teams. 
And a jump in and out on that three. There was Betts getting her hands on it, but it's taken by Pellington. Pellington stops. Whoa, how about that? The flyby and the finish. Shayna Pellington is the master of the jump stop. That's what she does. She gets out in transition to prevent her shot from getting blocked. Jump stop, lets him go by, and then goes up with it. Here It'll happen again. <laughs> Here's Belibi rumbling in, and the foul is called against Pellington. Shayna Pellington at 5'8". She's coming. She's got somebody on her heels. Jump stop, pump fake, lay it in. She'll do this multiple times in a game. Uses her quickness to get there and puts the brakes on to finish. You have to it. be a little fearless to do that, too, because sometimes you're going to get crushed when you stop short like and, that. And you have to be fearless when you're little. <laughs> you saw Pellington have a really big performance in that national championship game. Back in 2021 at 15 points, seven rebounds off the bench, ended up playing 30 minutes. Played a huge role in Arizona's attempted comeback, falling one point short. She is so important to this Arizona team in terms of pushing pace and pr providing defensive pressure. There's Reese, a little too strong that time. Rebound secured by Stanford and India Navarre. Navarre, the freshman guard, coming off the bench as well. Man, yeah, Betts is working hard in yeah. there. Betts. Over to Jones. Ten to shoot. Jones spinning, hooking, and hitting. The versatility. 6-1. She's a guard. Can play 2-3-4. Can play with her back to the basket, as you saw there. Face up. It was the most outstanding player in that Final Four in 2021. And projected to be a tippy-top pick in the WNBA draft this coming year. Not just top. Tippy top. Tippy top. The spin inside. That's a nice finish as Mary Martinez dipping inside. Beautiful post move and finish. Kate Reese, man, she is working, trying to front Lauren Betts, do whatever she can to keep the ball from going in. Couldn't that time. And if you see, every time Lauren Betts posts up, she puts one of her hands in the air, showing her, her passer exactly where she wants the basketball. I've been trying to teach my uh, young players to do that, Ryan. But how's it going? Not so well. <laughs> How young? Seventh through twelfth grade. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Martinez dishes out. Reese pump fakes the three. Seven to shoot. Connors pull up. Little short. And Navarre off and running for Stanford. Jump ball is dangerous from the perimeter for Stanford. Look at Betts pointing. There you go. Betts back to nice. work, is double, finds Belivi, beautifully done, post to post. I'm sorry to jump on your call, but I get so excited when I see good post play like that. Unselfishness too, we see a big girl. The only thing that excites Rebecca Lobo more than in-game snacks is post to post <laughs> passing. <laughs> Pellington can't finish it, and about a six second difference, game and shot clock. A 19-11 Stanford lead. Belivi cradles and finishes. Fran Belivi again, providing a jolt off the bench in this matchup for Stanford. Yeah, in that first matchup, 14 points, 10 boards in only 17 minutes, bringing it again. A 9-0 run for Stanford. Shot clock is turned off. Connor will fire. No. Rebound Jones, and that'll do it for the first. Stanford builds a 10-point lead after one in the desert. 21-11, the Cardinal leading. I do like my post play, post to post passing. Bets to Belibi, and then Fran Belibi cutting to the basket, energy, finish. Pretty basketball. Well, all roads lead to Texas, and this year we have two regions for the Sweet 16 in the Elite Eight, Seattle and Greenville, South Carolina, and then the national championship game will end up being April 2nd on ABC from Dallas. And you know what? The Pac-12, they're probably going to have a lot of teams there. You see Charlie Cream's projected bids from the Pac-12. You want to count up those teams, Rebecca? I got eight. That's what do you lot. got? Yeah, I got eight. Yeah, I got okay. Eight.
Every time I see that graphic, I, I see something different. Like this time, it was the cowboy on the horse, undulating. Oh, interesting. Yeah. You love the word undulating, and I, I understand why. We will have the first top 16 reveal at the half right here on ESPN. So make sure you keep it locked at the end of this quarter. 21-11, Stanford in front as Pellington hits the jumper. Another terrific crowd here at the McHale Center as Stanford turns it over. Important to Ryan for Pellington to hit that shot because we talked a little bit about Haley Jones having the size going against her, but she also plays pretty far off of her, daring her to hit the mid-range. Third turnover for Stanford. It was a pretty cleanly played first quarter for both teams. Just one Arizona turnover. Najee into the game, and the handoff is taken by Navarre. Navarre all the way in, lays it home. India Navarre, the freshman guard, with the steal and the finish. The number 20 recruit in the 2022 ESPNW 100. Pellington will fire again. No. Rebound Stanford. What did the Bonds tell us? We can't let them bait us into taking shots. We don't want to take that one. The step back, probably not the best shot for Arizona. Dump into Brink. Her face up jumper is good. Cameron Brink. Gets it to drop, and Stanford has made its last six shots. A 12-point lead for the Cardinal. Najee, motoring inside, gets fouled. And Najee will go to the line to shoot two. Let's check in with Holly Ruff. Guys, just get something to keep your eye on right now. Esmeri Martinez, one of the key scorers, is checking in right now. She was over in the huddle, kind of bent over, gasping, trying to catch her breath. I couldn't tell if she was nauseous or she'd been hit in the stomach and was just out of out of air. She's checking back in right now, and that is huge for Arizona. She's one of their top scorers at 11 points per game and one of their best rebounders at nearly nine. Yeah, really good defender as well. Brings a lot of toughness to this team. Three years at West Virginia before transferring. Two times has been an all Big 12 player. Maya Naji misses the first free throw. Naji is the highest ranked recruit in Arizona history, the number nine recruit in the country this past year. And Adia Barnes wondering if her performance last time out against USC might be a real turning point confidence booster for Najee. Had a lot of key moments in that game. Feels like she's really starting to come into her own as Martinez couldn't quite hang on to the steal. Najee coming off a game against USC where she had seven points, eight boards. So she really needs to continue to box out. Good, good job of that in their last game. The three is short for Bazgana. Brink on the follow gets fouled. And Cameron Brink, nose plug and all, will shoot two. Let's take a look at tonight's Wendy's Wooden Watch and Cameron Brink. 14 and a half points, nine and a half rebounds, three and a half blocks, second in Division I. Only St. Louis's Brooke Flowers averages more blocks per game. We talk about pro prospects in this game and Haley Jones. Well, the following year, you could bet Cameron Brink is going to be in the tippy top of that draft. <laughs> She's actually eligible for this draft. She turned 21 on December 31st. Right. No reason to believe she's going to enter early, but she is eligible. Have you seen Stanford's campus? That's a place you want to stay. <laughs> Fair. You milk that. Martinez lays it in. Nice set there from Arizona. Great cut by Martinez. And Pueyo found her.
A deflection, a steal, it lands in the lap of Martinez. Here is Pueyo. Jade LaVille, a player that needs to get going offensively for Arizona. Net by Brink, nearly threw it away, still 15 to shoot. What a pass. Pueyo to Gilbert, airmailed the three. Reese battles, wins, needs help, finds it. And a reset here for Arizona after a tough offensive rebound for Kate Reese. Here's Pueyo cutting, taking, and hitting. But this crowd just begging for an Arizona run. They have been locked in from the start. Erie Oppen did not get called for the charge and then did draw the foul. We've said that this game is going to be physical. Here you see the cut by Esmeri Martinez right to the basket. Beautiful pass by Arizona. And then a tough shot by Pueyo to go down. This end. I thought that was an offensive foul, like when she lowered her shoulder and went into her. Here he misses the first. Player who Tara Vanderveer says, she's our warrior. She's dependable. She has a warrior mentality. Got the second free throw to drop. Where is the atmosphere here? That's phenomenal. Other than the weirdness of sitting down when the other team scored, since then it's been yeah. great. For those just joining, the fans sat when Stanford scored its first basket rather than Arizona's. And it tripped out Rebecca a little bit. Kate Reese, tough angle, uses the window nicely. How about Kate Reese taking it right at the shot blocker and Cameron Brink? The hope for Arizona is to get her into foul trouble. Lapolo, no. Brink tipped it. It's going the other way. Over the back call on Brink. Hey, on Sunday, catch the biggest women's college basketball game of the year. Number three LSU visiting number one South Carolina, the reigning national champs. Women's college basketball between LSU and South Carolina, Sunday at 2 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. How about that for a, uh, an appetizer to the Super Bowl Sunday? Oh, I can't wait. I, I look at it more as the Super Bowl is the nightcap to that. I agree. Reese, a little too strong. Good effort there. Gilbert comes down with the board. The freshman, who Adia Barnes says, is no doubt our hardest worker. Really excited about what Kaylin Gilbert can become in her career is that time she loses it out of bounds. What she says sometimes Adia Barnes comes into this building at 6 a.m. and Gilbert's already here yeah. sitting around. Any early thoughts on that LSU South Carolina game Sunday at 2 on ESPN as Stanford turns it over? Oh, I can't wait. I mean, just for the battle of the bigs inside, Aaliyah Boston, Angel Reese. I'm curious, too, both teams coming into this game undefeated. What kind of impact will this game have on SEC Player of the Year voting, too? Yeah. I mean, both of these players have been dominant all season long, non-conference and in the conference. Just is going to be an incredible matchup. Holly, I know you talked with Angel about this game. Yeah, she said, I can't wait to play against Leah Boston. I have so much respect for her. She's fantastic. But she said, I want people to remember, this isn't Angel Reese against Leah Boston. This is LSU against South Carolina. And it's a sellout there. It is going to be an epic environment. And I cannot wait to be there. Must watch television Sunday afternoon, 2 Eastern on ESPN at the ESPN app. Here's Reese, deep catch. Draws two, lost the ball. Nice help defense from Cameron Brink. Here's Haley Jones, eyes up. The point forward, Jones. Betts pointing. Betts able to finish. Brink and Betts, some really strong chemistry there. Man, this box score, I just need to have Betts points. Not, and not like points per game, but the amount of the time she's pointing to catch the ball. Like with her finger. Yes, game. a finger point. Martinez hands the three. 36% on the scene is, and, and as Mary Martinez with 10 points in this first half. Where would Arizona be without Martinez?
Jones, backdoor, what a find! Haley Jones, a dime to Navarre for two. Haley Jones with incredible vision and ability to deliver the basketball to her teammates, whether in the quarter court, we've seen it in the full court as well. Beautiful pass. And now a turnover. Navarre on the steal, missed the layup. Now Arizona has numbers going the other way. Martinez kicks. Playo extra feed. Hellington will set things back up on a reload for Arizona. Man, this is an enormous lineup for Stanford. At least in the three, four, five spots. Lauren Fields tosses. Reese can't finish it. Okay, Reese two of five from the floor now, coming off a 33-point game. Arizona held to just 22 points thus far. Again, Brink. Betts, bucket. High-low passing is beautiful. Betts footwork, terrific. Sealing on the inside, putting her big left paw in the air so Brink knows right where to throw the ball. I love it. Stanford going big, having success with it. That three a little too strong for Martinez. Lead is 12 for Stanford. Jones spins, floats, and finishes. Haley Jones, beautiful take. And the Stanford lead is swelled to 14. Eight points now for Jones. A diversified attack for Stanford in this first half. Shooting 58%. Cuello, too strong, long rebound. Pellington has it. Looking to shift around Brink, could not. Jade LaVille on the bench at the moment for Arizona, held scoreless thus far in this first half. They really are going to need her to get going offensively. Pellington short. Her shot for me. Yeah. Thanks for the clarification. <laughs> She's 5'8". Cueo comes up with a steal. Such a ferocious and active defender. Good decision, good decision. Right now, Arizona needs to switch sides of the floor, get some touches inside if they can. Try to get a touch inside and a foul called against Betts. We'll have a timeout on the floor, 128 to go in this second and a 14 point Stanford lead. Haley Jones all over it. Haley Jones showing us her versatility. Beautiful bounce pass to the cutting teammate, and then she can score as well. Face up, get inside, spin, we see it. Well, thank you very much, L, Drea, Charlie Cream. Going to be a big halftime show. We get the reveal of the top 16 for the first time. I'm still thinking about depth and balance. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, Drea, very kind to us as well. Yes. Thanks, Drea. <laughs> See if Arizona can get any juice going before the half. Lapolo comes up with a steal. The dish, right wing three, won't go. Haley Jones flags it down. And Manopu just into the game for Stanford, misfiring on that wing three. And that's going the other way. An offensive foul called against Jones. That's the one thing. Stanford has had eight turnovers in this first half, but Arizona just hasn't been able to do much with them. Some of them dead ball turnovers as well. Yeah, most of them. That foul actually called on the polo, not Jones. Her first. 
That three is good. Madison Connor shoots it at 40%. Brink gets lost on the other end and lays it in. And Connor was left with her arms out wondering why Brink was free. Certainly not her job as a guard yeah. to get back and protect the paint. 8.7 rebounds in this first half for Cameron Brink. Connor with three seconds left. Going to have to get it off. And a foul is called against Jones. Haley Jones whistled for her first. And free throws here for Connor. One thing you know with Cameron Brink is that she is going to run the floor. She does. And what does she do, Ryan? She puts her hand up so her guard knows where to pass her the basketball. You always have to have your eye on that young woman. 6'4", but she can run. You're tracking points in this first half as well. Finger points. Yeah. Am, yes. Charlie Cream should be keeping track of that for me back in the studio. <laughs> I think he's busy enough. Do you think? Connor hits them both. And that'll do it for the first half. Stanford, a 38 to 27 lead on Arizona at the half. Adia Barnes talking through some things with her sophomore guard, Madison Connor, who scored the final five for Arizona. And Tara is with Holly. Well, Coach, you're coming off a loss, and you told us before this game you wanted to see some resilience and some fight back. What have you seen here in this first half? Uh, you know, Holly, I've seen that. I think people are playing really hard. Uh, they're working. Uh, we've got to get, take care of the basketball. And we've got to defend some of their screening action a little bit better. But uh, I'm really happy with how, uh, how people have responded. You're looking for the right combinations and seeing who's going to show up big. I thought yeah. Lauren Betts was a big factor Lauren, and a big target. How was. do you think that works? Uh, I thought she had a great first half, and she's going to play more in the second half. Uh, you know, just uh, gaining more and more confidence in Lauren. Uh, she, you know, she really, she's a very smart basketball player. She makes big plays, and people love to see her do well. So I'm very excited about how she's doing. Indian Navarre, too, had a great first half. Absolutely. All Thanks, right. Coach. Thank you. Well, Tara Vanderveer, the winningest coach in Division One history, her team, an 11-point lead of the half. That's a big factor on the interior. L. Duncan, Andrea Carter, Charlie Cream, a big factor in the studio. The top 16 reveal coming your way in just a moment. Thanks for coming back to our Thursday showcase. What a beautiful night in Tucson, Arizona. Mesmerizing. Number six, Stanford, a 38-27 lead over number 17, Arizona. As we welcome you back courtside, Ryan Rucco alongside the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo. Stanford, the problem in the first meeting for Arizona was Stanford's ability to dominate inside. Problem in the first half, again, Stanford's post really doing work. Yeah, incredible depth for Stanford in the post spot. They had 22 of their points, came in the paint. I like post points, and I like name and alliteration. We have both of them here. <laughs> Betts to Balibi. Then we're going to get a little more action this time. Balibi to Betts. And then fi finalize with another B. Cameron Brink being strong inside. Just unselfish post basketball from the Stanford Cardinals. Let's take a look at tonight's first half stats. They're brought to you by Target. 16 points and 12 rebounds between Brink and Jones combined, the All-Americans. As Mary Martinez with 10 of Arizona's 27 points. And the points of the paint certainly went Stanford's way. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. Well, guys, the big issue in this game right now is rebounding. Stanford out rebounding Arizona 23 to 12. I asked Adia Barnes about it at the half, and she said, We've got to box out. Their staff keeps track of box outs, and they had 53 missed box outs in the first half, just simply getting a body on someone is going to help. Then they want to be more aggressive on the ball. They feel like if they can get better ball pressure, it's going to make that catch out further. It's going to discourage them from getting it inside to the post in that high-low post action. She wants a little bit more aggressive ball pressure. Well, you see it right here, just from the inbound play. Pellington making it so Lopolo can't catch the basketball. And you could see Adia Barnes saying, get her, Shana, get her. Wanting that pressure, Brink a deep catch, gets blocked from behind, but the persistence of Cameron Brink. 
Nice block, but it still results in an offensive rebound and a putback. Reese gets blocked by Brink. Knocked out of bounds. And it'll stay here with Arizona. Cameron Brink, one of the best shot blockers in the nation. Averaging three and a half per game. Martinez looking for an angle, did not find one. Kiki Iriafin there for the rejection. Stanford's size can just be so imposing. And this is actually one of their smaller lineups that yeah. they have on the floor right now because Betts is not out there. And a foul here is going to go against Lapolo. How many mixed bo missed box outs was it? 53. 53. Holy cow. Yeah, that feels like a lot. Well, that's, you know, on, on one possession, you could have five. Well, especially when you only had 31 field goal attempts. Reese gets the offensive rebound. Connor had the look. We'll take it from 15 instead. And hit Madison Connor has a really good looking stroke. He's getting the start this half over Laville. Very interesting. You're right. Laville was held scoreless in that first half. Jade Laville, a player averaging 12 points per. Here's Brink. Good footwork and the finish. Wow, that was really nice. Cameron Brink going hard to her right and then quickly coming back to her left, keeping her balance. The ever-evolving game of Cameron Brink. How about Lapola? We've seen that several times tonight. Comes up with a steal, fires a dime, and Brink is fouled by Martinez. Cameron Brink will shoot two. Cameron Brink at 6'4". She can hit the mid-range jumper, so you have to come out on her. Two hard dribbles right. Oh! Goes right back around to the left, still finishes with the right hand. What do you like most about Cameron Brink's game? How it continues to improve. I mean, she's adding something. This year, one of the areas where she's much improved is from the free throw line. But we talked about it. Like, don't let her frame fool you. She looks slight. She's strong. She plays strong. And she stays on the floor, just an imposing shot blocker and defensive presence as well as all of her traits on the offensive end of the floor. Brink with 14 already tonight. Lead is 15 for Stanford. Cuello over to Connor. Shifty cutting and met Brink who is fouled. Brink call for the foul and free throws for Madison Connor. Brink's second personal foul, just smart job by Connor. She was going in there, and as soon as she saw Brink's body, I think she was seeking the body out even more than she was looking at the rim, trying to get another foul on her. She is an outstanding free throw shooter. Tied for the nation's lead. Oh, favorite Disney character is Simba from The Lion King. That's a good one. That is a good one. Do you have a favorite Disney character? Oh, I don't know that I do. Aladdin? Ooh, nice. That's not a bad one, right? Yeah. I was always a big Donald fan. The duck? Yeah. Do you know another Donald that's related to Disney? <laughs> I don't know. Does Disney also include, like, the Star Wars fan? Well, see, that's what I'm wondering, and that's my hesitation. Now that, you know, obviously Lucasfilm does fall under Disney now, then it would be Darth Vader, of course. Erie offense, strong take, left it short on the lay, got it back though. There's another second chance opportunity. Jump cashes in. Exactly what Holly was talking to us about as Stanford turns the second chance into three. Seventh offensive rebound for the Cardinal. Cuello, good setup. Martinez short. Pellington, the offensive board. Shovel over to Reese. Her shot won't go. And Jones, the rebound, controlling for Stanford. Arizona did so many things right on the off at last offensive possession and still came up empty. Oh, Brink is stealing it. Cameron Brink, 
who missed her first three shots, is six of seven since. Last offensive possession for Arizona, multiple players coming off of screens, getting looks, getting an offensive rebound, and they still weren't able to capitalize. Here's Reese. Turning, nothing there, but Cameron brings Paul. And that's Stanford basketball. Cameron Brink, 6-4 and long, and all shot blockers want is a little bit of space, and she's waiting there. Both hands up, ready to block the shot. And that block gives Cameron Brink the most blocks in a single season in Stanford history, breaking her own program record of 91 from a season ago. And that's Cameron Brink's third foul. So a big foul there, and Brink, who is rolling, is going to have to check out as Brooke Dimitri will come in for Stanford. That is one thing that Cameron Brink always kinds of has to tussle with, that foul trouble. And you're a little more okay with it when it's on a shot, you know, a yeah. attempted shot block. You certainly never want your, your player to get it, you know, closer Offensive to the three-point line, yeah. you know, by setting a screen. Najee in. We still have not seen LaVille in this third. Connor started for her in the third, and another chance here. Hey, Friday on ESPN, catch an NBA doubleheader. Begins with NBA Countdown 7 Eastern. Then at 7.30, Hornets take on the East leading Celtics. And the evening concludes with the Cavs and the Pelicans facing off at 10 Eastern NBA Friday. 7.30 and 10 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Next couple of days, I'm going to have to look at NBA team rosters before <laughs> yeah. I even <laughs> Oh, you are not kidding. It was a busy day for Woj. Five-hour trade deadline special for our entire NBA on ESPN crew. They did an unbelievable job with that show. And transaction after transaction. That three is good in the corner. Hannah Jump, lethal from deep. Four players for Stanford touched the ball on that possession, and it ends with a good-looking good look, good corner three. Arizona, meanwhile, has really struggled shooting in this quarter. One of eight from the floor. And like you... So here, ball into the middle of the floor. One pass and then the extra pass. It just leads to a great shot. Nice unselfish hoops. And how about Arizona? All right, yay, we got Cameron Brink, a third foul. She's out of the game. And here comes Lauren Betts at 6'7 to block the last two shots. And how about Lauren Betts coming off a DNP yeah. in Stanford's last game? Gets her opportunity in this one, has certainly made the most of it so far. And that's something that's always interesting as LaVille checks in for Arizona her first minutes of the second half after a scoreless first. Something always interesting about Tara Vanderveer's teams, Rebecca, as Pax comes up with another rejection. She really goes deep into her bench, and her rotations can fluctuate quite a bit game to game. Yeah, sometimes you look at the box score, it's like, all right, 15 players have played. Yeah. And Stanford's such a good shot blocking team, and it helps when you're 6'7", just keeping their arms in the air, making sure you don't foul with the body. And, and it's not just, oh, you know, 12 players have played, and it was a 40-point game. No, it could be a five-point game. And, she it's, goes that deep as Jones knocks down the jumper. Certainly a luxury for Tara Vanderveer, and she was saying this was today. You know, if, if players are out there and, and they're not performing, okay, somebody else will come in. And, and one of the other things she said is maybe it's something she actually has to do so that the motors stay gassed for Stanford throughout the entirety of the game. She said maybe in some cases she's playing a Haley Jones or a Cameron Brink too long of a straight stretch. Arizona continuing to extend their pressure. Stanford six of seven from the floor in the quarter. Betts bangs in and finishes. She's had a really nice game. Nice pass there from Hannah Jump as well. Many assists for Stanford right now. Fourteen. Fourteen assists on twenty-three made field goals. It's fun to play basketball that way. I wasn't sure if you wanted me to answer or if you wanted to do the looking up on the monitor yourself. Your iPad is so small. I know. Not the first time I've heard that. Jones all the way down to Navarre, who lays it in. Navarre 
we heard Tara Vanderveer shout her out to Holly Road halftime. She's paid a lot of impactful plays in this game. Certainly, and Haley Jones is an outstanding lead passer. Three-quarter court passes to teammates streaking down the floor. She'll find them. 14-2 run for Stanford. LaVille, that one was halfway down. Tickled the net and popped out. Jones, oh, what a find. Jones to Betts, and Stanford is putting on a clinic in this third quarter. And it's in transition, it's in the quarter court, it's everywhere. Stanford just offensively too much right now. 22 to six in this third. And the Stanford lead has ballooned to 27. Najee from 17, sure. Haley Jones lost it. Pueo, LaVille fires. No. LaVille has really struggled tonight. 0 for 6 now from the floor, make it 0 for 7. Averages 12 points per game, one of four Arizona players who averages 11 or more. Dimitri rims out. Another offensive rebound for Stanford. Navarre there again. And a whistle against Arizona with 2.17 to go in this third. Cameron Brink, a big night for Stanford. 16 points, seven rebounds, and the most blocks in a single season in Stanford history. We'll go a little deeper on Brink with Holly Rowe in a moment. A huge night for Cameron Brink. Cameron Brink has been a basket attacker, unafraid to create the contact, getting inside, and then when she misses, putting it right back in. Taking it at the hoop. She's been outstanding, 16.7 boards. For a little more on Cameron, let's check in with Holly. Well, Cameron's body of work has been a work in progress. She started out as a skinny, scrawny, tall kid. She said she actually got bullied in, in youth groups, and it was very difficult, some body shaming as a kid. But she started working out in high school with the athlete blueprint. Susan Borchard, a former Stanford soccer player, started this. And we've seen WNBA champions like Sue Bird, uh, Kelsey Plum, Brianna Stewart all work with the athlete blueprint. And it, on her Christmas break, when she went home and should have been relaxing, she went in for that workout with Susan Borchard, and she is very proud of the strength she has created in that smaller frame, but it is so powerful, and, and she has put a lot of time and effort into her body. She's proud of it, and she is fierce with it. Well, we have seen the impact that the athlete blueprint has had on different players in the WNBA, and the commitment has been there throughout the collegiate career of Cameron Brink, and you know will be in the pros as well. Seventh block this quarter for Stanford. They had one in the first half, seven this quarter. As good as they've been offensively, eye-popping offensively, they have been equally as good on the defensive end of the floor. Betts, shot clock down to five, backdoor feed taken away. Here comes Pueyo. Pueyo able to lay it in with the right hand. It's amazing. This crowd, despite being down 23, they've been so locked in every single possession. Betts looking for help. Finds it in Emanopu. Sanford has done a really nice job handling the full court pressure. Oskana into the game with Betts. Emanopu off the bench, Belibi as well. Shot clock down to four, cross court, and that's turned over by Stanford. Stanford has made seven of its last nine field goals. Arizona, just three of its last 15. Arizona's working hard, too, to get looks. You'll just see him running off of multiple screens. Just nothing easy. The size of Stanford just so imposing in this matchup. 
Najee, little jab step. Can't squeeze in the jumper, and Stanford can hold for one. Here's Jones, dumping it down, Brink, quick turn, what a beautiful play. And another gorgeous delivery from Haley Jones with six assists to go with 10 rebounds. What a third quarter for Stanford, a 25 point lead. Haley Jones, 10 points, 10 boards, and equally impressive six assists. So good, leading her teammates down the floor makes it so all you have to do is catch and finish. Great facilitator. The Tigers, the best start in the women's program history. All she in South Carolina, the two undefeated teams. South Carolina is so much that any opponent has to deal with. Sunday, number three LSU visits number one South Carolina, two Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. That is going to be an epic game, biggest game of the season thus far in women's college hoops. Cannot wait to watch it Sunday afternoon. That is going the other way, an offensive foul call. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. Well, Stanford coach Tara Vandeveer told us something great today. She said they're coming off that loss to Washington, and she actually used South Carolina's team as a great example to her group. She said, when I watch South Carolina play, even if the game isn't going their way, they don't give up. They keep fighting. They find a way. She was so impressed with South Carolina's resilience in that game Sunday against UConn. She used it to motivate her team tonight. Seems like a good example that they have responded well to. South Carolina, a team like Stanford who has great depth. It's one of the things that separates them from what they were a year ago. Reese finishes in transition. Brink on that first possession for Stanford picked up her fourth foul. Stanford and getting ready to send in some subs. And another foul that was, what, 30 feet from the basket? Right. Emma Nopu over to Brink, and Brink is fouled that time. Foul on Paris Clark as Brink will head to the bench. Dump down, Betts. Deep catch, spin, can't flip it in. Arizona comes away with a rebound, Lauren Fields. Pushing pace. Reese. Spinning, nice footwork, Kate Reese with a strong finish there for Arizona. Got to credit her too for going at Betts. You know, Betts has blocked her shot earlier in this game. All right now Arizona picking up, extending the pressure, trapping. Dimitri missed it. Betts, another offensive rebound for Stanford. They're ninth of the game. They have dominated the glass. Haley Jones on the attack, didn't get the whistle, was looking for it, another offensive rebound. Dimitri flips it in, plus the foul. But we saw at halftime the reveal of the top 16. And here is another look in the Greenville Regional One bracket. South Carolina, that means they are the number one overall one seed. Regional two, Greenville, Indiana is the number two overall seed. Seattle Regional three has Stanford as the number three overall seed, and Seattle Regional four, UConn. It really has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? 
Greenville <laughs> Regional One, Seattle Regional Two, or Three and Four. <laughs> we gotta work on that. Let's come up with uh, some catchy names. You wanna? Clark whips it in. I'm really looking forward to the two sites, though. Yes, Having all absolutely. that basketball in one place, that's going to be really fun. I get just got in trouble for making fun of the name, so I won't do that anymore. <laughs> We're just having you know, a little light enjoyment. That's it. Jones cuts and finishes. Great touch pass from Brooke Dimitri. Great touch pass. And the reason Haley Jones was open, great back spring by Lauren Betts. Jones is 12 points, 10 rebounds, 6 assists. Reese rattles in the face-up jumper. Tenth double-double this season for Haley Jones. She is on triple-double watch right now. Just four assists away. Jones. Squeezed, finds Dimitri. No. Rebound, pops back to Dimitri, and a jump held ball is called. Possession arrow belongs to Stanford. So watch Lauren Betts. She tells her, come, I've got the screen for you, sets it. It's what gets Haley Jones free for the easy two. The target interviewer told us this morning, I told my team, you don't go to offensive rebound, uh, coming off a game where they only had two against Washington, you're coming out. Well, every possession, every time a shot goes up, players are just crashing the glass. 31st career double-double for Haley Jones, most by an active Pac-12 player. Turnaround jumper is good for Dimitri. Talk about players who Tar Vanderveer raved about. Dimitri was one who she was glowing about to us before the game, said, I'm really high on Brooke Dimitri. She's mature, she's steady, she's smart, she can hit shots. Navars had a huge game and lays it in. She's wreaked havoc defensively. She's been making winning plays offensively as well. It's been a good game for the freshman class of Stanford. Haley Jones, Euros in, takes a tumble. And blocking foul is called when Haley Jones all smiles after some big contact. Haley Jones loves to do kind of the reverse layup, comes in to flip it over her shoulder, goes down hard, somersault. <laughs> 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 Terrific reaction there from Haley Jones, Holly. The only thing she hasn't done well tonight is drop and roll, right? Uh, she is such a fun player to watch, and she's got her own podcast right now that she is highlighting college basketball players. I've loved listening to Jordan Horst and Flage from LSU. She's doing a really great job with that. But what I'm also impressed with is her court awareness, her intellect on the court. She grew up the daughter of high school basketball coaches. She's been sitting on the bench with her mother since she was about three years old. And you just see so many ways she's a leader on the floor and really shines in her IQ and basketball intellect. Yeah, she has an effervescent personality. She's incredibly intelligent and dynamic in so many ways on the floor. We saw the way she took over those late game situations in the final four when they needed poise. She did that as a sophomore two years ago. Doing similar to what we just saw, handling the ball, coming up the floor. She didn't make that mid-range pull up, but that's what she made her money on in that tournament run. Reese drops it, Jones has it. Good point forward, and smartly too, understanding time and score, slowing things down, this possession. 14 points, 11 rebounds, six assists. That's over to Jones, her jumper is good. Haley Jones with a little more, make it 16 points. And the lead is 29 for Stanford. They have had a dominant second half and a really strong night overall. Fields? No. It took till Arizona was down about 27 for this crowd to finally 
settle in. Yeah, quiet down a yeah. little bit. They were incredible early in this game and throughout the third quarter, even as their team trailed by 20 plus. Well, Adia Barnes' teams are going to continue to fight and they're going to continue to play hard. This is just a really tough matchup for Arizona. Stanford's size, their shooting, it's just really tough for, for Arizona to hang with. Oh, Jones finishes. Beautiful delivery from the VAR. 22 assists now for Stanford. It's fun. It's fun when you share the basketball like this. It's fun to watch. It's fun to play. Stanford has outscored Arizona 40 to 18 in the second half, and Haley Jones is having a ball. It's easy. Arizona coach Adia Barnes, the all-time leading scorer here, the best player in school history, and she's leading her team, really building something special here. You might remember during the national championship game, there was a lot of attention around her balancing being a nursing mother. Well, this is really special. On Tuesday here at the McHale Center, a lactation room where nursing mothers can be private and go and breastfeed or pump during their work bay it was opened up here right on the concourse level. In fact, someone from Stanford reached out today, may I go use the room? A national sports writer that's in town with a four month old baby, may I go and use the room? This is unprecedented for women in athletics to have access to privacy and comfort when dealing with breastfeeding and nursing and just one more step in how Adia Barnes continues to be a trailblazing coach and mother. Certainly a lot of challenges for nursing mothers to navigate and kudos to Adia Barnes in Arizona for doing that. We'll always remember Adia pumping during the national championship game at halftime. Yeah. Holly doing the story. Rebecca, what has impressed you most about Stanford's performance tonight? Tonight, it's been their unselfishness. It's been incredible, the way they've been sharing the basketball, involving a lot of people. Really fun. We'll step aside. Another break here with 2.31 to go in the fourth. Stanford has been impressive on the offensive end, the defensive end as well. They're second in the nation in blocks per game, and today, they already have 10. Five different players with a block. This team is big, they are long, they are imposing defensively, and they have shut down the lane for Arizona today. Depth in the front court, and excellence in the front court for Stanford. Nine second half blocks, and an 80 to 45 lead with 2.25 to go in this fourth quarter. A turnover there from Arizona. Ashton Prechtel in her first minutes getting the steal. Here he often can't finish. Prechtel comes running in. Just speaks to Stanford's depth that Prechtel, a player we've seen impact huge games, only gets in at this moment. And credit her, because it's two minutes to go, and she came from the opposite side of the floor to get that offensive rebound. Okay, coach, you said get offensive rebounds, we'll get more minutes. Clark reigns in a three. Paris Clark, the freshman from the Bronx, New York Gatorade Player of the Year. Dia Barnes was praising Clark to us before the game. Iriafin couldn't pop it in on the reverse. 115 to go in this game. Gilbert ducks under and gets fouled. And coming up next on SportsCenter, a top five showdown tonight. Caitlin Clark in Iowa against Indiana. Indiana's become a consistent power now. NBA trade breakdown. Kendrick Perkins on the Wild Wild West. Kevin Durant headed out here to Arizona. The Super Bowl keys defensive players to watch on Sunday. It's a happening time in Arizona. Now lots going on. You got the Super Bowl out here in Phoenix. You got Kevin Durant headed to the Suns. Some important golf going on from what I've been told. Waste management, yeah. It's a very fun tournament. Waste management? Yeah, yeah. 
Forgive my golf ignorance. No, no. With the amount of sports you, you know, do keep an eye on. <laughs> wow, what a highlight there. Great pass from Clark. And nice energy here. How about the crowd here? in Arizona. Down 30, minute to go, really applauding the effort. Yeah, their team's giving them something to cheer about. We talked about it. This team is going to continue to work, continue to fight, continue to play as if the score isn't what it is. And some opportunities for some of the younger members of Adia Barnes team to make an impression. Yes, Kaylin Gilbert. The freshman from IMG Academy will go to the line. When the crowd starts chanting U of A, do you hear initially USA like I do? Yeah, it's the same cadence, yes. isn't it? Yes, it is. And we also see the, the bear down slogan written all over, including on the cheerleaders' cones. And it is funny, when I do a NBA game with Steve Kerr and Richard Jefferson, a Warriors game. Richard Jefferson, Steve Kerr. That's the first thing they always say to each other. Bear down. A lot of pride in those Arizona graduates. Here's Najee floating it in. And a whistle in the backcourt. Foul called against Arizona as they work on some pressure. Forty-four to twenty-eight. Stanford's outscored Arizona in the second half. Gilbert evades the pressure. That three banks in. Crowd loves that for Paris Clark. They love the energy they're seeing from their freshmen late in this game. So am I. Yeah. Clark has been a blast Absolutely. to watch these last few minutes. Just he's playing with heart and hustle. Couple of threes. Four assists. Some disruption defensively. And like when you play really hard and give a lot of energy, sometimes you get a little lucky. And that time she did by banking in the three. But man, her energy has been outstanding. And Adia Barnes talked about how difficult it is for a player like Clark, who's always been the best player on her team to come in and not play minutes some games and other games just play a few and said she could be really good though and obviously taking advantage of these minutes late in this game. Yeah, talk about how much they're going to need her next year too with some yeah. of the pieces they're losing. In Arizona. Letting some time wide. Clark on the attack, lays it in. Gives these fans one last thing to cheer about, and that will do it. An impressive road performance from Stanford as they take care of Arizona. 84 to 60, the final. Big games from Cameron Brink and Ailey Jones. Brink with 18 points. Eight rebounds and sets a single season record for most blocks in school history. And Haley Jones with 18 points, 12 rebounds, and six assists. The two All Americans with tremendous bounce back performances after the loss against Washington. And Holly Rowe is standing by with both of them. I brought you right here, right here. You get set a new school record tonight. You broke your own record for single season blocks. How do you continue to impose your will? I don't know, I just have some really great teammates that help me do what I do. And so, yeah, it's just really fun out here every day. She's being humble. She's the best shot blocker ever. Yeah, you are ferocious. There is a beast inside of you. Tell me, where does that come from and how do you assert yourself? I don't know, I love to play with the chip on my shoulder. I'm very much like my mom in that sense. So, you know, I, you know it comes naturally, I guess. What also comes naturally is your court awareness and vision, just how you're running this team. How did you guys bounce back tonight and, and really put it together? Yeah, I mean, I think we have goals for the season. We knew we haven't been playing our best, so it was really having a hard week at practice and just locking in on what our goals are and what we need to do to get there. So we have all the talent in the world. It's just outworking the other team now.
what are the goals? I mean, Pac-12 regular season, Pac-12 tournament, Final Four, National Championship. Same every year. I love it. Let's just put it out there, put it into the universe. Thank you, ladies. Great performance. Thank you, Holly. Bye. Oh, I love that chorus. Thank you, Holly. Very strong. Once again, our final score, Stanford 84 and Arizona 60. Coming up next is Sports Center for our producer, Kerry Callahan, our director, Mike Griffin, Holly Rowe, the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo, and our entire crew. I'm Ryan Rucco. Thank you for joining us. Good night from Tucson. Sports Center is up next.